Hello and welcome back to On The Workbench. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to build a Unify Protect outdoor floodlight camera system. So we've got some parts in front of us here that we're going to have to kind of hodgepodge this together because Ubiquity does not actually make this product. This is inspired by some uh, a similar product from Ring. And so I've got a, we're going to start with a few parts here, then we're going to put this together. So the first thing that we're going to need is a little bit of some hodgepodge of cameras. We're going to need a G3 instant camera and a G4 instant camera. And we're going to be using a Wasserstein floodlight with charger. When it comes to tools, all you're really going to need are just a few really simple tools. At the core of it is going to be a Phillips and a flathead or slotted screwdriver. Uh, if you want to be fancy like I'm going to be here, uh, have a few small white zip ties and a zip tie tool to go cut those up nice and flush. You also may want some electrical tape and or a pair of scissors for being able to uh, just deal with everything. And obviously you're gonna need a ladder to be able to reach your light, assuming that you are putting it up high where you need a ladder. So pretty basic tools. Now let's get going on with the project. Let's first start with the floodlight themselves. What I've got here is from Wasserstein, put a link down below. Uh, this indicates it's compatible with the WISE camera, but don't worry about that. Not really gonna be an issue for us today. And this packaging is black, but I'm gonna, I actually bought the white one, so hopefully they shipped me the right thing. Inside, we've got a user manual, a foam gasket, housing for a WISE camera that we don't really care about, mounting hardware, So this floodlight camera here, we've got a motion sensor right here. Then we've got our camera mount right down here and our two independent floodlights out here that we can use these, this knob on the back to adjust to the position that we want. And then all of this wires up in the rear. You can see there's our neutral, our ground, and our hot. And then on the side, the secret sauce here is this has a USB port and we have our quarter 20 screw right here that we can use to adjust where we mount our camera. And now onto the camera portion themselves. So I went out over and took down an existing G3 installation that I have. Uh, for one important reason is on this Unify G3 instant camera, this cord has a USB-C connection for the camera and then goes to USB type a at the other end. I've got my G4 instant camera. I've already connected this and uh, set this up with my network, so it's good to go. It obviously comes with the power brick and everything else that we're not gonna use and the other hardware. This is not meant to be an unboxing video for the G4, but the cord that comes with the G4 terminates with a USB-C ending. And they also give you the USB-C power adapter. But because the bottom of the G4 camera that we're gonna be using has this nice weather sealed port, what I need is the cord from the G3 camera to be able to plug in and then close the door to have that all sealed up there with the weather sealing. And then I'll be able to take my G4 cord, place this into my G3 camera just like that, and then I can rehang this and use my other power adapter here on my G3 and we're in business. Now onto the floodlight on the back side of the G4, there is a small mount right here that is threaded that we're gonna be using to secure this to the floodlight. So I'm just gonna pop out that core there for just a second. We're gonna come over here to the floodlight. Now. I've spun this up here a little bit. There is a ball socket here, and this little thread part here is a lock washer or a locking ring. So now I can just thread this camera into or onto the threaded mount here. And once you get it threaded in there reasonably well, just gonna go ahead and tighten this up. 
on the ring to secure the camera. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna go back and reinsert my cord. Again, this is the cord that I took off of my G3 instant camera. And then now this is where a little bit of fun starts because this cord is way longer than what I actually need. I wish there would be an easy way to shorten this up and guarantee that I don't screw up the cord. If Ubiquiti or somebody else sold a one foot version of this cord, that would be great. But what I think I'm just gonna end up doing is just routing this cord in a loop a couple of times around the floodlight. It's not perfect, but hopefully it's good enough. And then we'll take the USB-A end of this and then plug this into the socket right there. Now, obviously someone who's feeling crooked could just come up and literally cut the cord on this, but if they do cut the cord, this is going to obviously be within range and I would, have, I would already have them on video. To make this a little tidier, I went around and added a couple zip ties uh, around four edges of this wire coil. And then I'm gonna take a zip tie tool and then cinch those down just to try to tidy this up as best as I can. Four. So hopefully having those cords in a zip tie here will make that look a little bit tidier. Of course, the perfect solution would be to not have to plug this in, but this is kind of what I have to do since Unify doesn't make what I'm looking for. The other bit of the puzzle here is I also pulled off the little waterproof cover here. I'm gonna throw this aside in my toolbox in case I ever need, ever need to replace this. But since I'm gonna have a USB cord plugged into the USB port, I don't really need that silicone cover right there. I need access to it. I don't want it looking uh, any more cumbersome than necessary. And so now here's how it looks from the front on the back. And so I think this is pretty inconspicuous, all things considered, that to me, this block down here is not much different than a lot of the motion sensor blocks that you see on a lot of these lights. So for final mounting prep, I've done a couple more steps. On the back side, I took the gasket and then I trimmed it down so that it was not oversized like it was. It would have been nice if they would have given a gasket that fits much tighter around the inside uh, back side of this so you don't have any overhanging black on the gasket. Uh, even better is if there would be a nice little recess around here that you could set it in. That's not the case, but I trimmed it up just to try to make it look clean on the outside. As part of that process, I also made sure that the hole that they provide for it is lined up with the anchor plate that we're gonna to have to screw into our electrical box so that goes through correctly. The next step here is I need to remove the black, the white, and the ground uh, covers here. These wires are already pre-stripped, so all I have to do is connect these up to the wire nuts. Uh, once we get the old fixture removed, we'll be uh, adding this to the outside of the box. There's a couple screws here. Or to the inside, this will be covered up by the light fixture. And then we've got this sleeve nut, if you will, that's smooth, that goes from the outside in, that will thread over something like this to hold the light in place with the one screw. And then we've got this weather cap that will go over that insert and plug that up so we have a nice clean exterior. And that's all there is to it. The hardware kit also includes three wire nuts. There was no electrical tape provided. So I like to tape my wire nuts. That's just me. I'm a little compulsive about that. Uh, you decide what you want to do for your specific install. Now let's remove the old fixture and get ready for the new. Now in my case, to get ready for the new, one of the important things I'm going to have to do is to know my circuit breaker panel. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the inside and the outside lights with my circuit breaker panel. In my case, here's what the box outside looks like with the old fixture removed. Obviously, your mileage may vary based on your wiring. I've got a long ground wire here 
my black and my white very clearly defined. The box is nice and clean, just the way I like it. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with the installation of the bridge bracket across the posts. So here's how the box looks after I put in the bridge bracket. I had to reuse the old screws because the, the new screws didn't quite work with this box. I didn't feel like changing out the box. So now all I have to do is connect my wire nuts and then connect the light right here. After you get your wire nuts on, go ahead and put in your final front screw. You go ahead and tighten that up. You'll have to square up your lights and get everything positioned. Get your nuts all taped up. This will take a few turns to get this right. I'm gonna to try to square this up like that. There we go, something like that. You're gonna to have to position your lights where you think you want them. I'm gonna start with that. That's gonna be a lot of fine finishing. Then there's this little white cap that you're gonna place right here in the middle to seal up that screw hole. Turn your power on and you should be good to go. So that's as simple as it takes on the installation. Obviously you get to come back and program this in Unify Protect to get everything else set up. And now voila, you've got a motion sensitive Unify Protect light. And to get this all set up, we'll go ahead and peel off the cover. Any questions or comments, put it down below. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day. Bye. All right, it's nightfall, so now we're gonna test how the spotlight works. We're gonna walk up to it. You can see it is completely off. It does not do dusk to dawn and have a light mode or something like that. It's apparently motion only. We'll see how sensitive it is to me walking by. There we go. It turns on. Now there's no setting to be able to affect or to change how long it stays on or exactly where the motion is or to set it to dusk to dawn mode or something of the like. Uh, it just turns on when it detects motion. There's no high low option or anything of the like. Just when it detects motion, it kicks on. And that's that. There is no dusk to dawn option to have just some basic illumination of your property to deter uh, would-be thieves by having a dusk to dawn option that I had before that I really liked and was hoping that this would have as well. So I'm certainly a little disappointed by what I'm seeing and quite frankly what I'm not seeing here. So there you go, it turned off there. Let's move just again. And now we're back on. So that's probably about a minute or so that it stays on before it kicks off. Again, it'd be great to have a setting to make that stay on for three, five, 10 minutes. Uh, or like I said before, a dusk to dawn mode, but there is no switch, there is no control, there is no button or option to be able to enable that. So a little disappointing on that. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of choices in this category. So this is what at least I'm stuck with at the moment. If you've got any other creative ways to reverse engineer one of these lights into something like this, or another suggestion as a starting point, please put it down in the comments below. We'd love to hear about it. Uh, and I might redo this if you've got a good option. Other thoughts, questions, or comments, turn it back on again. Uh, go ahead and put it down below. Give it a thumbs up if you liked this video and thought it was informative. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day. Bye.